welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're playing with traditional blocks and I've got a real cute uh, half square triangle picture frame to show you here today. But first, let's do our shout out. Dave from Dave's Craft Room. He is just, it's awesome. I, there's, he tells jokes and he's, he's funny and he's charming and it's wonderful. You got to go check him out. So when you do go check him out, tell him Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you because this is a surprise shout out for him. He does not know this is coming. Also, you're going to find his YouTube channel in the show notes along with our Facebook group that we have and it's growing very rapidly we're you know doing the traditional sharing pictures asking questions all that kind of stuff but we're also making use of the virtual sewing rooms and that sewing room is open 24 7 and you can go in there and just put a little message in and say hey i'm in the sewing room and other ladies that are free will come and join you if they can i mean it's a lot of fun you never know who you're going to meet and you actually get to meet the members within the group the other thing that their group is doing, the Facebook group is doing, is they're doing a fabric swatch, uh, swap amongst the members. So there's people now from the UK that are doing a swap, Australia is doing a swap, and the United States are doing it, just to keep the cost of postage down. And I was hoping that somebody would step up and do the Canadian one, but we'll see, maybe they will. The, the other thing that's also very new to this group, and they're, the ladies that are participating in that are having so much fun. So you got to try that out, check it out. Also, what you're going to find in those show notes below or in the see more details is going to be our Zoom monthly sew date. Now, that is on Zoom. So you don't have to be a Facebook member to participate in that virtual sew date. You just have to be able to get onto Zoom. Now, and that's a lot of fun. You never know who you're going to meet. We've met ladies from all over the world, like Sweden, uh, Russia, Chile, New Zealand, Australia. Like, it's, it's awesome in there. We just have so much fun. Um, last thing, yes. I still do free, to, free uh, speaking engagements. So if you're a guild, or if you know of a guild that's looking for, uh, you know, uh, an inexpensive, because free is inexpensive, a uh, speaker to speak to your guild or you know just to help the guilds out because the guilds are some of them are struggling right now because of the pandemic and they're trying to get back up on their feet so just yeah if you if you have a speaking engagement that you'd like me to talk to talk at i will do it free on zoom that way it keeps the, the cost down for you for the guild and it keeps my cost down as well okay so come on in we've got some fun sewing to do today Okay, here we are at the sewing machine, and I've had so many requests on what to do with focal fabric. So I decided, okay, this is a cute focal fabric, you know, teddy bears playing hockey. And I thought, well, it's going to go into a kid's quilt. It'll be, it'll be gorgeous, right? So, now, I want to talk to you guys about this easy angle triangle. I cut all my half square triangles out of, with using this ruler. I pulled a three and a half inch strip of neutral, right, a low volume, and uh, cut my scraps into three and a half inches, right, width, and I just went along like, you know, cut one, cut the other, cut one, cut the other, cut one, cut the other, like that. Now, if you want a demonstration video on how to use this ruler, you know, I will be happy to do that for you, as well as there's a request, there's a couple of requests now for the Trirex ruler as well. These are easy rulers to use, and they work brilliantly. So if, if this is what you want to demo on this easy angle triangle ruler, I'll definitely do this. But I did give, if you don't have this angle, easy angle ruler, I did give you the traditional size cutting squares or the size of squares you need. You basically are cutting um, three, uh, three and seven eighths inch or four inch and you trim it down and then you cut it on the diagonal once and it goes through. So the hardest part of this block is your half square triangle, right? Which is not hard, right? Now one advantage on the easy angle triangle, that one dog ear is already gone. That one dog ear is just poof, it's it's gone, it's out of here, right? So it's nice, easy sewing. And you get a lot of triangles done very quickly. 
Now, you need 12 of, of these, right? 12 Casper triangles to go around. And I'm just gonna pop them off like this. This is not a hard block. Now, I know you could do the four at a time or eight at a time method. That's also acceptable. The problem with the four and a half or four at a time method is all your seams or all your edges are biased. Unless, of course, you cut your blocks on the bias. Well, how many people have that? piece big enough on a bias in their scraps? I don't. I mean, you know, I just, I look through my scraps and I, my, what I consider scrap is anything less, less than a, a fat quarter. Well, I also have a lot of little scraps too that I need to use up. So, I mean, sometimes that eight at a time works great, but you need big pieces, right? So, it's, there, there's all, you need to know all sorts of ways, especially if you're gonna do scrappy blocks. Now, I was very fortunate to have enough of one color to go all the way around. Right, so that's why. And they just sew up easy. You know, I was thinking, I am overrun in my stash with blue, and I was thinking it would be fun to do something where over the you know the next 20 weeks we just work on one color and we do 20 different 12 inch blocks and then at the end of the, the solo on we have 20 blocks that will go into a four four blocks across five down for a nice couch throw and yeah it would be it would be really cute actually so let's get this all off Yeah, who's coming? That's the hard part. That's that's not very hard at all. Now I'm just going to uh, run through. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to run through one of these leader enders. <laughs> okay, now. You got all these triangles. The first thing you got to do is trim off the other dog ear. Right? And I trim deep, so I'm going to line them up all the same way. It doesn't matter if you trim it deep. This one is sawed off at a right angle, but the other one I'm going to trim deeper. So that's okay. Well, it's okay if they're trimmed differently. Yeah. So anyways, I was thinking it'd be nice to do a block of a month and, and just concentrate on, you know, one color, like, you know, low volume and whatever color you have, right? That would be, and then after 20 weeks, you would have a quilt. But I was also going to push skill building as well on that. So I'm not sure if I'll get everybody on board with that or not. <laughs> it might be kind of, it might be fun to do, you know? And, okay, here we go. Okay, so they're all turned up white, so you want to press to the dark. So we want to turn these over like this. And I'm just going to finger press them all open and put them around the block. All in the same direction, right? So they're all going that way. There we go. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm just running my nail. <laughs> I have a friend who said, you have nails like talons. You know, I just dig right into the fabric. But I thought, well, this is kind of cute. The low volume has a little, it looks like gray, maybe. Grayish look to it on the camera, but it's definitely a bit of a blue. So they do match up, kind of, they do coordinate. And this one's a lot of, this one's a lot of fun to build. You can build it really quick. Okay. There we 
go. Last one up. Okay. There. Now all of the triangles here are facing the same direction. They're all at a slant. The color is to the top, the low volume to the bottom. So the way to make this block work easiest is you got to run the two middle ones together, right? And put them back in place. There's the top. Here's the bottom. Okay. okay, let me get the leader ender off. Here's the top. And you press to the dark. And there's the top. And the sides. Okay. Easy construction. This one knows the bottom. There we go. And the other side. That wasn't hard. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to put this all back. And I'm going to run another one th through the other side of this little Trirex block. I get a good match. And you're putting the other side of a Trirex block. This is just a, a leader ender. You try and match up the little piece. Okay. There we go now. Okay, so you always put it back together to make sure you haven't sewn something wrong. Because it's easier to correct one, to rip out one little seam than it is to rip out a bunch of big ones, right? So this is all going the colors to the top, the wool volumes to the bottom. They're all slanted the same way. Now, we just web it together. This, this just comes together so quick. And like that. There's no points to match up, so that's nice. And this just fits so nice together. That, like I say, I that free, that easy angle ruler, I thought was a lot of money at one point. I thought, gee whiz, who? Who would ever spend that kind of money on a ruler to make half square triangles? Because they're so easy to make, right? Well, once I got mine and started to use it in the last bit that we're webbing, I was very impressed with it. I could not believe how nice it was. And what an easy job it made of doing anything half square triangles, right? So I'm a firm believer in making that kind of thing happen. There we go. Oh, and I ran out of bobbin. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I did not win bobbin chicken. Oh, well. Here, we'll just get the bobbin. Oh, hang on. Yes, it happens to everybody. Even us. That are on YouTube that we run out of bottom. And my husband asked me if I had enough thread to make something. And I told him, oh yeah, I've got good. It's good. It's all good. Okay, let's go back just back over the last half inch. Okay, now we go back with this one. And trim off that thread because we don't need it. Okay. And we run the leader ender through. Okay, so now we're going to take this. We're going to fold to. Okay. There. And this has to fold out. Here we go. 
Okay, so we're just going to put it all back together so we can make sure. You always check, right, before you sew. Just check to see whether everything's going the right way. Yes, it is. So, I guess we're just going to go ripping down with our new bobbin. Pull the thread. Okay, let's get the other side of this on. Pull off all the excess threads that we don't need and get another piece of fabric. Okay, now, I'm going to make sure all of this is going the right way. It would appear this is going to lie best this way, where the center goes out. Because this, for some reason, is just a little bit chubbier. Oh, uh, chubbier fabric. There we go. Put that one that way. That one that way. There. Okay. Okay, let's get this web together. Okay. I'll show you. I'll try and remember to show you the back before we get to our ta moment. Now, I always like to snip that webbing open once I get started. Because I find I can, if I have to maneuver or push or pull or, you know, ease in anything, this is, this is the time to be doing it. Just gonna snip that off. Give it a quick finger press this way. There we go. Okay. Okay, now I made this. I made it, I pressed it so all the seams nested beautifully together, which is kind of like big. Big, big in, the, in this in this house. Make sure all the neat seams nest. Okay, another leader ender. There we go. And now I'm just gonna press that out, just like that. And I will give it a good press before we get to our ta-da moment, but. Again, snip my thread, the webbing threads in between, so I don't have to worry about which way everything is going. And I can, if there's, if something is a little problem that I have to ease, I can ease, right? But nearly, it's not, it's not bad. What is this? Oh, this one's going up, this one's going down. Okay. There we go. And get a leader ender off just so I can get it off the boards. <laughs> I found a bunch of this stuff with low volume cut. I had no sensors, so I'm getting rid of them. So they will all be made into little blocks. No. Now, what I did is I pressed out this way, and I could also press out this way. That works. Oh, I should press that one in, because then all the, the dark goes in, or most of the dark goes in, except for this area here. So, now, I just press it like that, and I press it just like that on this side. And everything, you can see too, like all the little, the intersections now mat, match because they nest. 
they nest properly, right? So another intersection there and there, right? So let's get to our big ta-da moment. Okay, this is our big ta-da moment. Isn't this cute with the little teddy bears? I've had so many requests on how what to do with big, fo big, big print focal fabric. So I thought, okay, so we're going to do a bunch of picture frame ideas like this. You know, because that's just a cute way to show off. And what looks cuter than two teddy bears trying to play hockey? I mean, it's cute. It's adorable. Now, this is a take on the traditional because normally they go in, right? Like the blue would be here and then it would go the other way. So I decided, okay, let's play with the direction of the color parts of the triangle and make this work out a little differently. Now, if you do want a um, tutorial on how to use that easy angle ruler, I'd be happy to make one for you. Just let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I hope you have an absolutely amazing week ahead, and you take care until then. Okay, bye! My husband and I would love to thank you for all of the amazing people that we have met along this crazy YouTube adventure that we've been having. Uh, we do free speaking engagements too. So if you're part of a guild and they're looking for, you know, people to talk and, you know, and chat with, you know, in their uh, monthly meetings, tell them that I'm doing free ones just to help the guilds out because it's been a tough time for the guilds as well. You know, share, like, and subscribe with your friends, you know, make sure that they're you know, they, they, they get the word out on us. That's, I mean, that's the best way you can do to help us out. So until we meet again, I want to thank you. Okay, goodbye.